The Bridgecom BCR40U UHF repeater for amateur radio today on Ham Radio 2.0. Hello, good afternoon. Uh, welcome to Ham Radio 2.0. My name is Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time to join us here, please click on the subscribe button below so that you can keep up with all the videos that I do on this channel, anything and everything that is new in amateur radio. Today, I've got my Bridgecom repeater. Now, Bridgecom, I like to tell people that Bridgecom was the first ever sponsor of my show. And what I mean by that is they've never sponsored me monetarily. In other words, they don't pay me a monthly fee to feature them on my channel. I do have, at, at the time of this recording, I do have t three different companies that do sponsor me with uh, mon uh, monetary payments. Uh, you can find those linked in pretty much all of the videos down on YouTube or if you go to livefromthehamshack.tv and click on any episodes, they're usually linked from there as well. They're also on the front page of livefromthehamshack.tv. And at the time of this recording, they are uh, Gifts for Hams. That makes uh, lighted signs, plaques, call sign displays, whatever. A lot of cool stuff. Um, they made that Ham Radio 2.0 lighted uh, sign. Uh, the Greater Houston Ham Fest, which is probably the second, maybe third largest ham fest in the state of Texas, takes place in March every year. Really great group, group of guys. I'm looking forward to that show this coming March. And the third one is RNL Electronics, where you can find all kinds of amateur radio equipment, antennas, connectors, supplies, anything having to do with amateur radio. Really good sale prices on stuff. I've talked about them before. So, but Bridgecom... While they've uh, never sponsored me in that regard, they have lent me um, equipment to review, and they have donated equipment equipment for me to review. And this repeater is falls into one of those categories. So they asked me to review their repeater, and quite frankly, it was an easy sell because I'm like, oh, yeah, of course I'll review your repeater. There are a lot. This is a 440 repeater. They make the repeater in three modes, 2 meters, 220, and 440. Um, at the time of this recording. Maybe they're working on some others. It'd be really cool to see a 6-meter repeater out of them or maybe like a um, 900 megahertz. Some places outside of Dallas-Fort Worth have uh, some really good 900 megahertz uh, systems. But at this time, they only make the 3. Um, and there are a lot of 220 megahertz repeaters in the Dallas-Fort Worth and North Texas area that are Bridgecom repeaters. They work well. They're fairly easy to program. And they have a lot of accessories on them. So we're going to go over those real quick. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over here. And when I plugged in this, if you look at the screen here, uh, you'll see, well, first of all, look right here. The microphone port in the front of the repeater is also takes the programming cable. It looks like the size of an RJ45 port in the mic port. Uh, so you can plug in the microphone and talk into the repeater while it's online. But the programming cable is an RJ11 cable, but it plugs right into it. It plugs right into it. It goes into standard USB, which is inside of my laptop here. I'm going to show you. It, came, it comes up as a prolific driver. So some of you may have good or bad experience with prolific drivers. Pro prolific drivers are not hard to use. You just got to kind of understand. To, sometimes, sometimes you have to play with them. I didn't have to do anything with this one. I did not install a driver. I plugged it into the computer. And it came right up. So here's, if you look under ports right here on the screen, plug in USB, it refreshes, it comes up as prolific USB to serial com, or serial com port on COM5. So all I do is I open up the Bridgecom software, which is over here. I, I lost it. It's right here. BCR repeater programmer. We'll open that up. I'll go ahead and full screen it so everybody can see it a little bit better. And I go, if I click on read from the repeater, it's going to ask me which one. Now, I did this prior to the video. I just kind of went through a test and made sure everything was working fine. And it does. So you can, it did not select this by itself, though. It came up as COM1. Okay, so the software is not smart enough to read where the repeater is, or at least it didn't for me, okay? Which is okay, you just kind of, you just have to know where to look for it. So if you open up Windows Device Manager, and you look for that prolific driver under the COM port section, or on the, the port section in Device Manager, it comes up and it clearly says COM5. So I chose COM5 manually, 
and I click start and it brought down the information just like it's doing right now so again I've already done this I know what it's gonna say I know what it's gonna look like just wanted you guys to see what it looked like so I'm redoing it again data has been read successfully click OK come up here here are all the channels on the repeater and this is where the repeater came from now this repeater specifically was a display model that they would take to ham fests and set up at their booth in a ham fest to you know uh, sample and test and let people see and touch and play with their repeaters really cool stuff right so um, this right here is uh, WB0YRG is the backyard repeater group up in Kansas, which is where Bridgecom is from. Uh, they have a DMR talk group, but they have a, a, a lot of different repeaters up there linked that are both, uh, they have DMR repeaters, uh, they have analog repeaters. I think they've got some, I, I'm sure they probably got some 220 stuff up there. Um, I don't go in there because I drive through there, I've driven through there two years ago was my most recent time to be up there, so I don't go up there a lot. So anyway, the receiver, if you notice, the receiver is 448.375, and the, and the transmitter is 443.375. So that is backward. You're going to say, oh, it's a minus 5 offset. No, it's a plus 5 offset, because when you key up your radio, if, you're, if my repeater frequency is 443.375, as, as it shows here, when I key up my radio, my radio transmits 5 megahertz above that. So you're going to program your repeater backwards from where you program your radio. So like my DMR repeater frequency that I have coordinated is 440.5125 with a plus 5. So I'm going to record, I'm going to um, program my repeater to listen at 445.5125 and transmit at 440.5125. Because that's what a repeater does. It listens where you're transmitting. So when you key up and you're transmitting on 5 megahertz above wherever your repeater frequency is, the repeater is listening at that 5 megahertz higher frequency. And then when you unkey, the repeater retransmits it over the same frequency that you're listening to. So it's backwards. So you record your radio this way, you record your repeater that way. And when you key up, it does this, and they come back. So... Anyway, that's the thing. So just remember when you're, rec when you're programming a repeater, if you have a plus 5 offset for 440, you want to record it like it looks like a mon minus 5 offset on the repeater software. If you have a minus 5 offset for your coordinated repeater pair, you record it with a plus 5 offset on the repeater. So on the repeater programming. So power set. So my, and like I said, this is going to be, yeah, we're going to change this. KC5HWB. And broadcast interval in minutes. Uh, let's do 10 minutes. Uh huh. Repeater access code 1234. I'm going to change that later on when you guys aren't looking. And it doesn't. I'm hitting backspace or delete, and it's not deleting the frequency, but it will do type over. Power setting is 9, 980. That's not 980 watts, but basically. I think that probably means 98%. Okay. Forty watts continuous duty. Okay. So um so it's a BCR forty U. So maybe the 40 means 40 watts. 40 U. I was thinking four, the 4 was for 440, but it says 40 watts UHF. So that's probably... BCR is Bridgecom repeater. Their mobiles are BCM, Bridgecom mobile. Their handhelds are BCH, Brid, Bridgecom handheld. And then dash, and then whatever the, the number is. So they have 220. I think their, I think their repeater is a BCR-220. So... Um, but this is 400 to 470 megahertz, 70 centimeter, 40 watts continuous duty cycle, digital ready for amateur dual mode, digital analog, designed and assembled in the USA, two-year warranty. Designed and assembled in the USA. That's a cool thing to say about amateur radio equipment these days. That's a very cool feature that we can say these are designed and built in the United States. Very cool. You're going to see some more stuff on that upcoming on this show.
with other stuff. So back here. Uh, yeah, so 980 is probably about 98% of 40 watts. If you look here, do a mouse over, it says 0 to 995. Okay, so it's probably 40 watts at 995 and 0 watts at 0. And then you can incrementally program it that way. So that's really cool because on Motorola DMR repeaters that I've programmed, you basically got a low and a high setting. You can program it on low power or high power, and that's about it. Now, there's a way to go into the back end and kind of ha hex edit it and change that, but through the programming software, the Moto Turbo programming software, you can't really do that. But this is an analog repeater with digital capability. We're going to get into that. I'm not going to talk about that in this episode. We're going to have another episode coming up that you're going to be able to view right here on this card on YouTube, and it's going to show you a little bit more about BridgeCom setting up the BridgeCom repeater as a, a mobile repeater, or I'm sorry, a digital repeater. DMR, D-Star, Yezu System Fusion, etc. So we're going to go through that later. So we're going to go back in here. I'm going to go ahead and leave this on 25 kilohertz for now because I'm programming in analog. Okay. I can export as test, export as CSV. I can save a file and email it to a, to a friend. I can um, open I can open a file that I've saved beforehand and program multiple repeaters with the same file. Um, not sure why you want to do that unless they were far away. So these right here export as text, export as CSV. This is program or write to repeater. Just like that, COM5, we're gonna start. And it's gonna take a little bit longer to write to it than it's gonna read than it is gonna read to it. Okay, and that is that. So, um, this is obviously, this is very, this is kind of like the base of it here. And then I can go in, I can create users to do administration. Uh, the receive signaling is a CTSS. The transmit signaling is carrier only. Okay, so I can go in here and set the CTCSS, and I'm going to set mine as 110 because most of the repeaters in the North Texas area use 110. Of course, I can use anything I want to. Uh, let's just be a little bit different. I'm going to set it as 103.5. Receive signaling is 103.5. Transmit is also 103.5. So that means your, your radio has to both transmit and receive tone squelch to hear, to both activate and key the repeater. User ID 103. That's just, they just had that programmed as the peel tone number. Courtesy tone, none. You can set your courtesy tone here, include tone in tail. So you've obviously got a lot of, I could even set a, set a DCS's digital, uh, uh, I forget what DSS, DCS stands for, but it's digital uh, peel tone. Sometimes called DPL. Like that. And so I change that, so I'm going to write once again. Com5 start. And it's going to go. So let's get a zoom in right. I'm going to zoom in on the front of the repeater and go through some of the menus. And I'll get a shot of the back. And we're going to go from there. This is the screen of the repeater. You've got uh, select here. If you had multiple channels in here, you'd probably be able to select the channel here, but it's on KC5HWB, which is where I put it. Of course, you can turn the volume up and down here. Uh, repeater is aux, bass, shows your bass sync, and monitor. You turn monitor off and on, and if I had a Speaker pr plugged into it, uh, which I do not right now. That puts it into repeater mode, aux mode, base station mode. And that's where you would use the microphone to plug into it. And then you can turn the monitor off and on. I don't have a speaker plugged into it right now. We'll go into repeater mode. And one of the cool things about this repeater, let me turn it around real quick. So this is the back of the repeater. You can see it's got a built-in fan, of course. Like most repeaters, it's got battery backup. You, so you can hook in an external battery with maybe its own uh, power supply charger or solar control charger. It's got type-in connectors for the receive port and for the transmit port. 
Um, duplex that would go to duplexer out. This would go to duplexer in, of course. This one over here on the left or on the right, rather, the receiver would go to duplexer in. The transmitter goes to duplexer out. And then the coolest thing about it is you can set up this right here for multiple things. You can set it up USB. There's your external speaker port right there, which I don't have hooked up right now. Repeater bus, audio line, and computer IP. So you can do multiple things. And one of the things that I'm going to do on the next video that you're about to see is I'm going to connect to here. I am going to connect a repeater builder STM32 DVM device. So that, is, that looks like this right here. And it's got a DB9 built on the back of it with the nine ports like you can see right there. And this is a DB25 right here. So we're going to take this cable and we're going to hook the Pi-Star operating system based STM32 device into this repeater. It's got Velcro on it because they've built it to do that. And we're going to see what digital, what the digital modes it can do. Okay, so that was obviously the Bridgecom repeater. Now, if you're setting up a, an analog system, whether it's 2 meters, 220, or 440, and you want to program your repeater, you basically just have to do what I just did. Plug it up, program it, uh... I suggest getting a coordinated repeater pair. You don't have to, but I suggest it's always a good idea to do that. And then get on the air, get yourself a duplexer. Um, put it, this is um, the Bridgecom makes duplexers, but there's a lot of different place to, places to get duplexers out there. You can get a mobile duplexer. You can get a big set of four or six or eight different cans for um, whatever band you want uh, duplexer. And then put up your antenna and you're, re you're ready to go. Hopefully you have a tower site. A good, a good high tower site. Myself, I've been looking around in the North Texas area for a place to put up a new 220 repeater because there's a lot of good 220 repeaters in North Texas, but there's not any, any, any actually in mid-cities. So I want to put one up around Grapevine, Colleyville, South Lake Keller, something like that. We'll see. But um, stay tuned for the next episode. That will be setting this repeater up to be a DMR repeater connected through Pi Star and connected into, hopefully connected into the Seabridge. I'm going to see if we can get it to connect to my Seabridge. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching.